Last time we covered the first part of the new starting zone called Exile's Reach. So in this video, we're gonna continue summarizing every single quest that happens over there. If you missed the last episode, then go ahead and click right over here, watch that, and then come on back. But if you're ready to go, then let's find out what's going on in World of Warcraft. off, we had just used the Scoutomatic 5000. And now you've returned after finding out that Captain Garrick's son, Henry, is about to be sacrificed. So you speak to Lindy Springstock. He says that the Resizer version 9.0.1 Ah, 9.0.1 which is the patch that Exile's Reach was released on. Nice touch Blizzard. Anyways, he used it to make the Scoutomatic 5000 go from a travel size into something that can actually be used. Now, this thing barely even works on inanimate objects, but because Henry, Captain Garrick's son, is about to be sacrificed by this guy, then we might as well try to enlarge a board to stomp out the undead army that's up ahead. So Lindy follows you around while he calibrates the resizer. The first two times? Not so great. But on the third, he successfully enlarges a boar. After that, you report back to Captain Garrick. She's eager to save her son and tells you to mount the large boar so that you can ride into the undead army up ahead and take him out. Once you mount the boar, you charge in, taking out the entire army. Once that's done, the boar shrinks down to normal size and you begin to fight the necromancer Torgok. After you kill him, you and Captain Garrick meet up with Henry, who apologizes to his mom for trying to fight the ogres. Captain Garrick gives him some words of advice, but then requests a situation report. Before you hear what Henry has to say, you're awarded either with the Expeditionary Short Sword or the Expeditionary Cudgel for having saved him. Now Henry gives his report to Captain Garrick. He says that the ogres are using necromancy to raise a dragon from the dead, and that they need sacrifices to fuel their magic. Right then and there, you witness the ritual beginning far off in the distance. Captain Garrick tells you and Henry to move fast, and that we'll put a stop to these rituals before the ogres can complete complete them. Now, you run up to Captain Garrett to report for your next assignment. She tells you to talk to Quartermaster Richer, who's collected a bunch of supplies from the wreckages on the island. So, you speak with the Quartermaster. In short, this part just teaches you how to buy and sell stuff. Not much of any importance here, but when you speak to Captain Garrick again, you're given the standard issue knapsack, which is basically a 10 slot bag. Now, you run up and speak with Bjorn Stouthands, who says that Captain Garrick wants us to search to the west of the camp to find other members of the expedition. Then he tells you that Alaria and him will go on ahead, and to catch up with them later. Now, you run up to Private Cole. While he was scouting the area with Lindy's device, he mentions that he saw a ghost who was offering power to any true warrior, and says that maybe you should try going over there and see what that's all about, because we could use every advantage against the ogres. The ghost can be located at the Dark Mall Bridge directly north of here. Kind of an odd part of the story, but let's just see how that one plays out. Now, you run over to Henry. He thanks you for saving him earlier, and says that we need to find the remaining survivors before the ogres sacrifice them for the dark ritual. He mentions that he saw one of the survivors being dragged away by a group of harpies who happened to have a roost to the north of here. He then tells you that Keylaw and him will head up there and meet you there with a scouting report. So now you've got three sections to explore. Bjorn and Alaria in the Dark Mall Plains, Henry and Keylaw to the north at the Harpy Roost, and Private Cole wants you to talk with the ghost at the Dark Mall Bridge. Let's first take a look at what's going on with Bjorn and Alaria. When you arrive, Alaria says that the winds whisper of people being trapped in this pit and that there may be more members of the expedition inside. She says that it's up to you to get in there and save five of the trapped members and one more located deeper within the pit. So you head inside, rescue the five members and make your way deeper to find Ralia Dream Chaser who happens to be in a bit of trouble because someone named Hrune the Exiled is harvesting her life force. So you engage with Hrune and before he dies, he begins to burn the place down. Ralia is freed and shapeshifts, telling you to get on as you both escape the spider pit and return to the surface. When you arrive, Bjorn and Alaria are glad to see that you and Ralia made it out safely, even though that Ralia is a bit sad that the spider's home was destroyed. Yeah, it's, it's just a druid thing. Now you speak with Captain Garrick again, who tells you that Ralia is a druid of the Cenarian Circle and will be a big help against the ogres. You're then rewarded with the expeditionary plate arm guards for having rescued the members from the spider pit. Now you head out to the Dark Mall Bridge to talk to some ghost that 
may grant you some power. When you arrive, the ghost named Halmar the Undying, or Jalmar the Undying, sorry if I got this name wrong, says that you're no hero of myth or legend, but he does see potential in you. He then says that he'll share with you his mightiest technique before asking you to end his suffering. As a warrior, you learn the ability Execute. Now, I'm sure that this is different for every class that's out there. So if you went through Exile's Reach as something other than a warrior, then go ahead and comment down below the ability that you learned. So now that you've learned this new skill, Halmar wants you to fight him and use the new ability to put him away for good. The reason why he wants you to finish him off, even though he's a ghost already, yeah. The ogres trapped his spirit here a long time ago, and only through a glorious death will he be able to finally rest. So you fight Halmar and put his soul at ease. Now that that's done, you head out and make your way towards the Harpy Roost to meet up with Henry and Ki La. Once you arrive, you run up to Henry, who tells you that the expeditionary mage, Meredy Huntswell, is being held captive by the Harpies and wants you to lead the charge into the Roost. While you're in there, the Harpies have totems scattered throughout the area, and Harpies are known for using those to corrupt anybody nearby. So while you're in there, destroy five Harpy totems. Kila also has a task for you to do. She says that the Harpies are planning an attack on the camp, mentioning that what they like to do is swoop in and snatch up their victims, and then bring them back here to the roost so they can feast. So now you know that horrific bit of knowledge about Harpies. Thanks, Kila. Really. So she wants you to kill 10 Harpies and or their allies while you're in there. So now you get ready to head in and congrats dwarf guy on the ding. Anyways, once you run into the roost, you start off by burning the five totems, killing the 10 harpies and or their allies like the wargs in the area. And then you make your way over to save the mage, Meredy Huntswell. She's caught up in some spell and tells you to fight off the harpies while she tries to cast a spell to free herself. After fighting for a while, Henry and Kila show up to help, followed by a large bird named Bloodbeak who begins to attack you. After the fight is done and the mage is freed, you head out of there. Once you return to the three of them at the entrance of the roost, Henry says that the foul magic in this area is dissipating and rewards you with the expeditionary plate girdle. Meredy Huntswell thought that one of her spells would be the thing that you know took her out later on in life and not some harpy, but she seems really grateful that you saved her life. So no worries there. Kila says that having killed the harpies should keep the camp safe for now and that we should start focusing on what the ogres are doing. Henry then says that we should head back to camp and speak with Captain Garrick to find out what we need to do next. So now you head out, but you notice something off on the side. So you might as well go check it out while you're still here. You run up to something called Light Spawn, and he tells you that he needs your help. He's been bound by dark magic against his will. Light Spawn then asks that you take a piece of his light and use it to dispel the necrotic energies that are keeping him trapped. So you make your way around the area, dispelling the bad energy that's keeping Light Spawn captive. Once that's done, you return to report. Lightspawn says that he must leave this world, and bids that you take his blessing. He grants you the light speed, which is a buff that increases your running speed by 60% for 10 minutes. Now, you head back to camp, and once you arrive, you speak with Captain Garrick to find out what you can do to stop the ogres from raising a dragon from the dead. Looks like we're coming up to the end of Exile's Reach. Even though it's small, it's got a decent story to it. Nothing life-changing, but it's fun to follow. Plus, they did a really good job in teaching new players how to play the game. Next week, we'll be wrapping this area up. So if this is the kind of content that you like watching, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon for notifications, as well as the like button so we can spark that YouTube algorithm. And as always, thank you to the Patreon members for supporting this channel. If you'd like to help out, then go ahead and check out the Patreon link down below. And with that, we'll see you next week when we find out what happens next in the Tales of Azeroth.